tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Let's get started with animation. Hello folks, today we talk about this. This is uh, anti-aliasing 3, this is anti-aliasing 5, this is anti-aliasing 9, and this is GPU rendering with anti-aliasing 22. So we start with 3, then 5, then 9, and then 22. But uh, the GPU renders much faster. So this tutorial is about rendering time for uh, subsurface scattering. This is exactly what you see here. It's a skin texture, basically. And uh, it has this wonderful rim and uh, it's, uh, it's very sweet and uh, it is very costly in terms of uh, rendering. Uh, I use a piece of music which I composed in maybe 15 minutes playing three tracks on uh, acoustic guitar uh, using Spire, which is my favorite composition tool, actually. Uh, no ad here, I'm not getting any money from them. I just love this device. It's called Spire uh, and it's uh, it was developed by Isotope. Okay, let's get to this scene now. You can follow this tutorial with any kind of geometry, but uh, a little bit of complexity is always nice to have because it raises rendering time. I got uh, this molecule structure from the protein database and it has the code 7E7D. I did a tutorial about protein database. This is basically one out of 40 spikes of the coronavirus. The coronavirus consists of a big cell which would be underneath here, right, uh, more or less round, which is the main cell, but the infection work is being done by the spikes and the spike protein consists of about 24,000 molecules, I think. And uh, they are in, they come in three strands and you have the three colors here. I gave them the three colors. Colors don't make sense in that atomic uh, world anyway, because the wavelength uh, length of light is much different from the dimensions in the atomic structure world. So uh, they are kind of in, entangled here and uh, I gave them different standard surface shaders uh, with skin. The, on the presets you find the skin and the skin has a lot of uh, subsurface scattering and what I uh, did, they all have the same shader but I gave the shaders different colors. So for example this one is the green one and this one is the blue one and this is the more more or less red one and the radius is the same uh, with all of them the scale etc you can play with these dimensions uh, obviously that's clear when you render this uh, structure it does take time let's go to arnold and just render it You see, rendering for 960 by 740 takes 7 seconds, and now it's finished. And this is a pretty poor resolution because um, it's small, and it has the anti-aliasing of 3. This is this number here, and um, it uh, is too grainy. When we just rotate around that molecule, let us do this. It looks like this, very grainy. It takes how many seconds? Just a few seconds. It's still rendering. You can see the rendering process here and uh, seven seconds as well. So for a pre-visualization this is perfectly all right but um, and for a still image you can fix things in Photoshop for example by removing that grain, that color grain, but uh, it is not really good for showing off your work. So you would typically go to the render settings which are here and in the render settings you can give it a name and uh, in my case I rendered the turntable camera which you will see in a second and uh, as PNG but the interesting thing here is on a renderer it has the camera anti-aliasing of 3. So it took 7 seconds to render this frame. So let's uh, raise this to say 7. 
Down here you see that the, it's progressing much slower. It's only 9% has been rendered, 10% now. It's rendering part after part. This looks much better than before, but it increases rendering time immensely. So from this value from 3 to 7, which is quite necessary to raise uh, for subsurface scattering for this skin tone effect, uh, it, it is very costly in terms of rendering time. Now you see a much better image in terms of grain and noise and it took 37 seconds. I mean you could say I won't care, I'll just grab a coffee and then the image is finished even when we go up to say 20, anti-aliasing 20. Uh, you can grab a cup, cup of coffee and when you're back uh, this image is being rendered but uh, you need to render the animation in order to evaluate that graininess in the animation because in the animation it comes down to flickering dots and uh, if the still image is okay sort of uh, the animation is not okay in most cases so you have to look for uh, well speeding up your an, uh, animation your rendering for the animation because uh, the difference between 7 seconds and 20 seconds is immense if you render 100 200 in my case 200 uh, or 1000 frames just to have a short animation of a, a few seconds so um, if you don't have much time and most people don't have too much time you would consider trying out anti-aliasing numbers, values, which are not too costly in terms of rendering time, but which produce a compromise between grain and smoothness. You see, it's only at 7%, so we can just stop this. It's starting here. But what, what we can always do in order to evaluate this better, we click on this icon and we select a part which appears critical to us. And then it starts rendering this part. And even this part takes a long time to render, as you can see. And the resolution of the image is small. It's under 1000 pixels wide. So this doesn't lead you very far. By the way, when we set the camera anti-aliasing to 1, this is interesting too, when we get rid of our little grid, it takes 1 second to render and you have this very grainy object can you set anti-aliasing to zero yes you can and even faster well sort of one second for rendering so for a preview just leave it like this and uh, you will see if the whole animation basically works and you see some kind of subsurface scattering appearing here uh, but the noise is very irritating now I show you the alternative in the system. I change it from CPU to GPU. Now the graphics card is rendering the scene and the graphic cards card renders in one second as well because this value here, zero, doesn't make sense. So let's uh, go to seven. It renders differently. You see uh, it doesn't start somewhere and end somewhere. Uh, it takes five seconds and it's finished. For this is the GPU. You have to have a, a GPU which supports this. For GPU rendering you need much higher anti-aliasing values than for a CPU rendering. So when the CPU renders this with a 7 it takes a long time but the quality is much better. So let's raise this to say 20. This, as we've seen, would take ages with the CPU but it doesn't for the GPU. You see the progress here of this blue line is much faster and you see a nice subscattering effect here and I think this is quite good and it could be tolerable in the animation. So let's have a look at the animation and uh, for these uh, I think it's four animations very short 200 frames each I will play a piece of music which I created with that <laughs> lovely isotope spire machine. Just three guitars. We finished with rendering its 41 seconds. This is quite a nice structure indeed.
So work with this compromise and try out things which you render overnight. It's really exciting. And at the end of this tutorial, I show you uh, an animation which took two days to render. Qu pretty amazing. Uh, with subsurface scattering. Because of subsurface scattering, it took so long to render. It's a 1000 frames. Well, have a nice day.